Let's get this. Hey, Frank, we saw that uh, LeBron and AD are both going to be out. Just uh, wondered kind of if you had any more about that decision pro uh, decision process and how close they were to plan. Yeah, well, Anthony, you know, obviously woke up with a, a great deal of soreness in his groin and, um, you know, just would not be intelligent to play him after playing 43 minute, minutes last night uh, to play him on the second night of it back to back with the, the playoffs right around the corner. So um, we made the decision to hold him out and, you know, Bron uh, continues to evaluate his ankle uh, and how it's feeling each day as it responds to the rehab work and just felt like we're not, not quite ready uh, for him to be, back, to be back in there. So uh, both of those guys will be out, uh, along with Alex Crusoe, will be out as well. And Frank, just uh, starting with LeBron there, we know that he practiced a couple of times. Was there anything, any soreness resulting from that? And what is the plan for him with practice and everything the next day or two? Yeah, it's, it's, it's everything. It's soreness, it's strengthening, it's, it's the movements, all, all those types of things, uh, you know, that, that he was going to give it, you know, hopefully a few more days and, um, you know, just not quite there yet. Would you say, was there a chance that he would play in the final two regular season games? Uh, yeah, there's a chance. Uh, but again, you know, we're literally taking this thing uh, one day at a time and, um, you know, we're going to bring him, bring him back at the, the most intelligent time to do so. And then just moving back to AD for a second, Frank, uh, you, you said that it was pretty sore today. Uh, anything from the medical staff about uh, the process of getting him back? And is it is it would you consider it a minor thing at this point? Definitely consider it minor. Um, you know, there's no uh, no injury, just just really tight. And, um, you know, obviously, uh, you know, with with today and then two days off uh, from games, uh, after today, you know, we have three days for, uh, of an opportunity to, to really put that behind him. Okay, Kyle Goon, please. Hey, Frank. Um, is it is it? I know you were saying that the the banner night is is for the fans, but is it just kind of hard to to have this night um, and and have waited so long? And you know, two. Well, I mean, three of the guys who helped win that title are not going to be in uniform um, and and just kind of representing how banged up your team is has been this year? Well, you know, at first I'd say it's it's not just for the fans, but, you know, we wanted to make sure the fans were a part of it, and that's why we, we selected the date. Uh, so it is, tonight is for the fans, but it is a great source of pride for all of us as well. And, um, you know, to have some of those guys not in uniform, I mean, we, we can't really uh, worry about things we can't control. Um, can't worry about us being in a pandemic and not having a parade and not being able to do this on, on opening night. Uh, of this season. Um, we're just all trying to make the best of a, of a tough situation and, and not worry about the other stuff. You know, it's going to be a special night for all of us and uh, looking forward to being a part of it. Dave McMenamin. Frank, you guys are six and 10, I believe, without Anthony or LeBron this season. What do you think has been the, the common thread to allow you to, you know, have some modicum of success without your two big guns in the lineup? Yeah, I mean, we got to got to adapt, and uh, you know, those six wins. I'm pretty sure Dennis Schroeder was a big part of those those wins as well. So not having Dennis out there, um, we were extremely shorthanded, you know. But you know, it doesn't change the fact that we have uh, we have enough uh, to go out and compete and and to get a W. We got to play team first basketball. Everybody's got to defend, you know, their butts off, and you know, we got to play selflessly offensively, you know. And if we do those things. Uh, even with those guys out, we're confident that we can get a, get a W. Dan? Frank, uh, two quick ones. Um, <clears throat> are, are you confident that Dennis, um, once his sort of that 10-day period expires, that he'll be able to rejoin you guys? Do you have any idea on that at this point? Uh, it's still a possibility is all I can really say. You know, um, it's still the earliest date that he can return. And, um, you know, he can return on that date as of this moment right now. You know, so that that hasn't been prolonged. Um, so we're hopeful that that he's able to play in the in the, in the Indiana game. And then, and then, secondly, I, I guess um, these LeBron workouts. I guess I would say last weekend was when we first started hearing, like, boy, like he looks really good, right? And, and guys were kind of talking about it and stuff like that. Um, obviously, I think the the news the last two days is maybe taken a little wind out of some 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 of the sales about that has it has it dampened your optimism that he'll be 
where he needs to be by the start of the playoffs. Um, there's kind of a little bit of a delay, I guess, if that's the right word for it. You know, I mean, I think we're all hopeful. I mean, we can watch him in a one-on-one workout and, and see him moving well and, and be encouraged by that. And we're all eager to see him back out there. But we have to be realistic that this is a, you know, a, a high ankle sprain and these things don't go away quickly, you know. So, um, you know, I don't know if, uh, you know, what percent he's going to be at. Uh, but it's it's a challenge to to recover from this type of injury, um, you know, going into important games like we're going to go into. All right, Bill Orm, please. Hank, uh, I guess I have two questions. One being, normally you would with two days between games, you would take tomorrow off and practice on Friday. But on Friday, you would, you'll be traveling to the Eastern Time Zone. Will you be able to get that practice in? And how important is that for LeBron? Yeah, we're going to work uh, when we arrive in, Indian, in, in Indianapolis. Um, that's the plan right now. I, we're still trying to figure out what 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 time of game uh, that game is. They haven't announced that yet. So, um, you know, obviously that can complicate complicate things. If it's a if it's a noon game, you're limited how much you can do in an evening practice. So, um, you know, we're trying to figure that out. And you know, the, the plan is to you know to find a way to get some work in, uh, not tomorrow, but the next day. And then uh, the second question is, is there a possibility then? I mean, you said it was, you know, you, you seem to leave some room for doubt of whether LeBron would be able to play in, in, the, in the final back-to-back. Is there a scenario where he could um, have to hit the ground running in a, in a play-in game, uh, you know, kind of in that sudden death sort of scenario without, without any other games under his belt? You know, I think it's possible, but we're hopeful that he's able to play before then. Um, you know, but like, like I said, we're, we're evaluating this day-to-day. You know, uh, you know, with how his ankles responded to the, to the rehab work, and um, but like I said, we're hopeful that, that he, he's able to play before the playing game. All right, we'll take two last questions. Harrison Fagan, please. Hey, Frank. It seems like Wes has really made an impact for you guys over the last couple of games. I was just wondering what you feel like has allowed him to be so effective over like the last five games or so, and if he's changed kind of your thought process at all on the playoff rotation and how big of a factor he'll be in that. Yeah, it's always it's always good when guys play well enough to create good problems for the head coach. And, um, you know, Wes has certainly uh, played his ass off the last couple of games, you know, quite frankly, to, to, to put it, um, you know, to put it that way. Um, you know, sometimes when guys, you know, fall out of the rotation or take, take a few games off, you know, it gives them a chance to kind of get their legs under them, uh, reset uh, you know, their focus and, and all those types of things. And, you know, this, this seems to have really benefited Wes. You know, he's uh, shooting the ball well, made the game win and play, to, and obviously to send it to overtime and give ourselves a chance to win last night. Um, has really competed his tail off on a, on a defensive end. Um, you know, so, yes, he's, you know, like a lot of other guys, uh, making a real case to, to be in a playoff rotation. And, you know, we've said all along we're going to need everyone. Okay, last uh, question. I think we have a follow-up for Kyle Goon. Hey, Frank, LeBron just doesn't get injured like this very often. He's only had one injury that, that's bothered him this long. Um, I know you, you've talked about having conversations with him, how he's feeling. Does that or does any sense of frustration kind of seep through in that or impatience or anything like that to, to your ears? Uh, I, you know, I think he, he wanted to be back, you know, uh, long before now. You know, but, you know, obviously, uh, you know, you have to listen to your body and, you know, you, you know, guys have injuries and they have to be out, you know. So, um, you know, I don't know if I use the word frustration. You know, I think he's being intelligent with it, uh, but he certainly wants to be out there <laughs> as soon as possible. I can tell you that much. Um, he's very, very eager to get back. All right. Thanks so much, Frank. Thanks, everyone.